Hello, uh, my name's Matt Lewis and I'm a corporate partner here in the energy team at Osborne Clark. Um, if you're not familiar with Osborne Clark, we're an international law firm with offices in 25 locations around Europe, Asia and the US. Uh, we provide our services to our clients through various sectors and two of our key sectors are energy and financial services. And so I'm very pleased today to be talking to Elena Pallasmith from Foresight Group. Uh, Foresight is one of our key clients who operates across both of those sectors. Hello, Elena. Hi, Matt. So first of all, tell us a bit about Foresight Group generally. Sure. Um, so as a very brief introduction to Foresight Group, we're a private equity and energy infrastructure investment manager. Uh, we manage around £3 billion worth of assets and 90% of those assets are invested into uh, clean energy assets uh, across the globe. Uh, we've been very active in two spaces in particular, uh, the first being solar, where we've worked very closely with Osborne Clark on a number of transactions. We manage around 1.2 gigawatts of solar assets globally, both in Europe and Australia. And we also have done a lot of work in the bioenergy or waste energy space, um, investing a number of institutional mandates on behalf of the Green Investment Bank and the European Investment Bank. Over the past five years, we've also transitioned into areas of new energy infrastructure. So we've done a lot of work in areas such as battery storage, um, reserve power, uh, gas peaking engines, for example. And uh, tell us a bit about ESG, environment, social and governance. How are you incorporating ESG into your investment decision making? Yeah, absolutely. And I think by nature of the assets that Foresight invests into, uh, sustainability has always been a very important part of our investment process. Um, however, over the past two or three years, it's something we've really started to, to place a lot more emphasis on. Um, we've made our first full-time hire at Foresight Group who focuses on our sustainability policy, which he's helped to develop and refine over the past two years. Um, and that includes Foresight's five sustainable evaluation criteria, which we um, assess every single investment we now put through our investment committee in order to ensure that they meet a number of uh, minimum levels of uh, sustainability criteria before we actually do invest into them. And over the past two to three months, we've actually seen a number of, of projects that we think are very good on a financial perspective actually be turned down uh, on sustainability uh, factors. Okay. And um, at Osborne Clark, diversity and inclusion is something that we're uh, taking very, very seriously uh, these days and um, is a big impetus from our managing partner. Um, is that something that plays a role in ESG from Foresight's perspective? Yeah, absolutely. And I think aside from the investment side of things, we actually are looking at how we incorporate ESG from a group level or, or top down level. And um, diversity inclusion is obviously something that's very important and something we're working really hard um, to get better at. We now have a diversity and inclusion policy and a diversity and inclusion committee in which I sit on. Uh, and we look at a number of different things uh, from um, hiring people at a younger level, uh, such as interns or graduates, for example, but also how we can support women getting to more senior mm. positions uh, within Foresight Group. Um, there's been a lot of work and studies looking at um, where more diverse boards or more diverse mm. companies tend to perform better. Uh, and we really do think that will be an important part um, of Foresight's um, makeup of their employees going forward. Mm. And do you think there's or has there been any evidence of any correlation between ESG and financial performance? And do you get any pushback from your investor clients about that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think one of the things we've really seen, and especially in the role which I do, is investors are becoming more and more focused on, on ESG. Of course, they want a portfolio that performs well, um, but they also want a portfolio that will be sustainable into the future. A lot of work has been done into whether there's any direct correlation between um, ESG and, and financial performance. And I think it has been hard to kind of quantify that direct relationship, uh, especially when a lot of investors look at ESG as more of a risk management um, tool. Uh, however, we are seeing some direct links between things such as health and safety, for example, uh, on our sites or, or in our investment companies. So, um, so for example, on our, our solar sites, um, if there's uh, effective health and safety policies implemented, we've seen that means there's a lot less downtime on site. Less downtime means uh, obviously better production, and that's linked to financial performance of the assets. So there are some links um, you can take from, from that, um, but still, yeah, there's a lot more work to be done in terms of how we can report on that. Going forward, what do you see for ESG in 2020 and beyond? 
So I think one thing we are going to see a lot more of is ESG becoming part of official regulation on companies within the sector. Um, so an example we saw of this recently is the Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosures used to be a voluntary part of uh, companies reporting obligations under the UNPRI um, umbrella. However, this has now become mandatory and I think we're going to see more and more of this um, happening in the sector. I think this will be a great thing because not only will it mean hopefully more companies will be reporting on their ESG data, but hopefully it should mean that their data is also more accurate and more easily used to compare and assess companies uh, on it from an ESG perspective. So what interaction are you having with your investor clients around ESG? So as I mentioned, it's definitely become um, a much bigger focus for all our investors and something they're starting to spend a lot more time working on. Uh, a good example is that we've recently been finalising our reporting templates with uh, some investors we have in South Korea. And what we've tried to do there is ha make sure we have sections that not only focus on the financial performance of the assets, um, but also the ESG performance as well. And we've worked with them to understand what would be useful for them to see and understand about the assets within their portfolio. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, and we'll put our contact details at the end of this video. So should you want any information about Osborne Clark or Foresight, please do get in touch.